Hello Brewers, Brad here again with Brewing TV, and in this video I'm going to go over the very basics of designing your own all grain recipes. Now in doing so, there's many facets. First, you kind of got to pick the beer style that you're really into, something that you want to brew, and after that you got to choose the malt, the hops, and the yeast to make that vision a reality. So let's get started. First off, let's start with the grains. The most widely used grain in beer brewing is what's known as malted barley. Although rye, wheat, and oats also have a role to play. But you're going to find in any beer, the most widely used grain is what's known as base malt. Base malt is responsible for providing all the goodies that are needed to convert all the starches in the grain into fermentable sugars in the mash. Without base malt, you'd pretty much just end up with a grainy flavored colored water with little to no fermentables to transform into beer. Now the most widely used base malt here in America at least is this stuff right here. That is just standard American two-row. It's got a really clean, light, crisp flavor, and it's perfect for brewing a wide variety of beers. There's a bunch of other kinds of base malt too. I'll cover a few. Pilsner malt, which provides a very light color with a pronounced grainy maltiness. Vienna malt, which creates a darker color with a slightly toasty and a little bit of a nutty flavor. And Munich malt, which will make a wonderfully rich and complex malty flavor with kind of an orangish tint. Now I've only went over just a small handful of all the base malts available. There's a ton of them out there. You can use these base malts and mix them together pretty much any proportion you want to create a whole lot of different flavors from slightly sweet and grainy with a really crisp finish to something really bold and complex. There's a lot of beers out there that are only brewed using base malt. Next, we'll look at the caramel or crystal malts. Caramel or crystal malts are malted barley that have actually been sent through a special heating process that turns some of the sugars on the inside of the grain into much longer, more complex sugars, which are actually not broken down in the mash or fermented in the final beer. This can lend to much more complexity in the beer, it can give you a fuller body, as well as have a pretty significant color contribution. Caramel malts come in a whole variety of colors, most often denoted with a number followed by a capital L. This L stands for Love Bond. It's a scale used to measure the color of malts. The higher the number, the darker the malt. Here, we have some Caramel 20. This particular malt will lend a subtle light caramel flavor to the beer, as well as some body. This darker one here is Caramel 90, and it can provide full caramel flavors, sometimes even some notes of raisin and fig, as well as provide a reddish hue to the beer. Like the Caramel 20, it will also provide additional body to the beer. These are only two varieties of caramel malts. This one's pretty light at 20 love bond while this one's pretty dark at 90. But you're gonna find that there are an incredible amount of caramel malts out there. Anything down from say, maybe eight Lava Bond, going all the way up to about 200. And each one of those has their own flavor contribution. Next, roasted malts. Now these malts can provide a very roasty, sometimes coffee-like, and even burnt toast kind of flavors to the beer, as well as lend a very significant color contribution. These are typically the malts used in brewing beers such as porters and stouts. Now, some type of these roasted malts include chocolate malt at about 400 love a bond, has almost a baking chocolate type of flavor to it and will provide a deep reddish to black color to the beer. Black malt at about 600 love a bond is as pretty much as dark as it gets. Black malt is intensely roasty tasting and can contribute a nearly jet black color to the beer. Now, roasted barley at about 500 love a bond is actually not malted. It's a raw barley that is highly roasted to achieve this black color. Roasted barley provides a coffee-like flavor and is the key ingredient in classic dry Irish stouts. It will have a similar color contribution as black malt. Now that we've covered the very basics of malt, let's go ahead and put together some grain bills for four basic types of beer so we can see how they both look and how they taste. For now, we're gonna omit the hops and the yeast. First, we'll start off with the most simple of grain bills. A Pilsner. As the name would suggest, this beer utilizes Pilsner malt, usually only Pilsner malt. In this case, I use nine pounds of Pilsner for a five gallon batch. As you can see, this beer's got a really pretty light golden straw color to it, and it's got a really nice kind of sweet grainy aroma. Pretty dry, pretty crisp. I like it. Next, let's create a very straightforward American Pale Ale. For this beer, I used 10 pounds of American Turo and one pound of Caramel 40 in the five gallon batch. In this beer, the combination of the two row malt and the caramel 
has given it a pretty nice orangish hue, a little bit of caramel sweetness, and a nice medium body. Now we'll put together a red ale. For this beer, I used 11 pounds of two-row base malt, a half a pound of caramel 40, and three quarters of a pound of caramel 80. The use of the darker caramel malts in this beer really give it a nice red hue, as well as provide some really nice, rich, sweet caramel flavors, and a nice medium body as well. And our fourth beer style is a robust porter. For this beer, I used 10 pounds of Maris Otter, which is a really flavorful British base malt, a half a pound of black malt, half a pound of chocolate malt, and three quarters of a pound of an English medium crystal malt that comes in at about 55 love about. Now in this beer, the Maris Otter provides a really nice, rich, almost kind of bready character to it. And then the roasted malts will give it as characteristic color and also notes of chocolate, coffee, a little bit of burnt, a little bit of roast. And then the dash of caramel malt is really gonna give it a little bit of sweetness that helps round everything out and bring the beer together. Now all these beers turned out pretty well, but I really think the pale ale here could use a bit of a boost in the malt department. So to achieve that, what I'm going to do is actually omit a portion of the American two row and replace it with Vienna malt. So now the recipe becomes eight pounds of American two row, two pounds of Vienna malt, and one pound of caramel 40. And what that does is it really gives this beer a little bit more, a little bit more maltiness that plays well with the hops. It's just a little bit more fuller bodied and it's just got a little bit more flavor all around. Turned out great. So now that we've got our grain bills defined, it's time to add some hops. Hops are a hugely important ingredient in beer. They provide the bitterness to balance out the sweet malt profile, they give more flavor to the beer, and they also provide that wonderful hop aroma found in many beer styles. Now there's a huge variety of hops available to us brewers, and it's kind of up to us to figure out exactly what goes in what beer style and how to use them. Another thing to keep in mind is the alpha acid percentage of your hops. The higher the alpha acid, the more bittering potential those hops have. And also, the longer you boil hops, the more bitterness you're going to get out of them. Go ahead and take a look online. You can find all sorts of information about the flavors, the alpha acid percentages of all these hops. With all these hops out there, we got to pick what we want. One great tool to use is what's known as the bitterness units to gravity units ratio, otherwise known as the BU to GU ratio. This is a way to quantify an appropriate bitterness for a particular beer style based on that beer's original gravity. For example, if a beer has 50 IBUs worth of bitterness and that beer's original gravity is 1.050, well, that's 50 over 50, so that's a ratio of one. Now let's take a look at the four beers we already developed grain bills for and add in some hops using what we know about their flavors and bittering potential using this bittering units to gravity units ratio. Now that we've established grain bills for these four beers, it's time to start adding some hops. We're gonna take what we know about the hops aromas the bittering potential, and this bitterness units to gravity units ratio to start adding hops to these beers. First, the Pilsner. This is a really simple beer, and just like the Grain Bill, it only utilizes one hop variety. This is hopped with 100% Czech size hops to provide a moderate bitterness, but some nice flavor and aroma as well. Taking into account the average IBUs and the average gravity for this beer style, the bitterness to gravity ratio is about 0.7 we are shooting for an original gravity of about 1050. So with quick math, we should be shooting for right around 35 IBUs. To get there, I've used one ounce of hops to provide the bitterness, one ounce with 15 minutes remaining in the boil to provide the flavor, and one ounce with five minutes remaining to get that aroma. This should get us right around the targeted IBUs. Next, we've got the pale ale. For this one, I chose some pretty iconic American hops, Cascade and Centennial. Now, the key is with this beer is to get just enough bitterness in there, but not overly bitter, but you still want to have that nice hop flavor and aroma as well. An average bittering units to gravity units ratio for a pale ale is right about 0.77. So, one ounce of Centennial for bittering, and a mixture of Cascade and Centennial were added within the last 10 minutes for both hop flavor and aroma. Now for the red ale, I personally prefer a moderate bitterness and a nice kind of mild, spicy, and floral flavor at the end. To achieve this, I used a small addition of high alpha acid Columbus hops and finished off with one ounce of Willamette in the last 10 minutes. This style beer has a bitterness units to gravity units ratio 
right around 0.6. And with a starting gravity of 1.060, we're shooting for right about 36 IBUs. And finally, the robust porter. Now this beer style averages a bittering units to gravity units ratio of right around 0.65. And so with the, the pretty strong roast and malt character of this beer, just pretty much a bittering addition is all you need. And just a small addition of hops at the end just for a little bit of flavor and aroma. In this case, the porter's original gravity is right around 1.063. So we're aiming for about 40 IBUs. Any higher alpha acid hop will do here. As long as the amount of hops used will result in the proper bitterness range. For this beer, I've bittered with Horizon hops, then used traditional Kent Goldings for a bit of flavor. Now the last thing to take into consideration when making a recipe is the yeast. Really important. So, just like hops, there are a ton of yeast strains available out there. You can add anything from a very clean fermenting American ale strain to something English that has a little bit of fruity esters to it, all the way to something like a, a, a German Hefeweizen yeast, which has got very dominant notes of banana and clove. So it's really what you're looking for in your beer. In this case, I used a classic German lager strain for the Pilsner. For the American Pale Ale, well, I used an American Ale yeast, nice and clean, let those hops come through. For the Red Ale, I actually used a British strain because I like a little bit of that fruity esters in there. And same thing with the Robust Porter, I used the American strain as well. I want that roast to come through. So go ahead and go online, look at your big yeast manufacturers and read the descriptions and see what you like. I really hope this has been helpful so far. I know it's very simple. We only covered a very small range of things, but you know what? I just want to get you ahead in the right direction. So one great thing to do is you can go online and just search for existing recipes. If you brew that and you find that beer is pretty darn good, but you think it could use a little bit more toasty malt character, a little bit more roast, now you've got the weapons to go ahead and do so. Add a little bit of toasted malt, add a little bit of caramel malt, or up the gravity with more base malt. The sky's the limit. Have fun with it. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Have a great one. Cheers.